Do you have what it takes to be a U.S. Open ball person? Applicants must take part in rigorous drills that test Ooh. court awareness plus the ability to roll, catch, and toss a tennis ball. You need agility, stamina, and athleticism. There's no maximum age to be a ball person, though mm. they're usually known as ball kids. Mm. If chosen, you're part of a six-person crew. You're either a net or a back. Nets kneel at the opposite ends of the net Ooh. and are in charge of collecting balls after the point is over. A backs are located in each corner of the court. They toss balls to the players. This has got your name all over, Robin. Yeah, it I does. would love just mm -hmm. for a day. You've got great lateral job. movement. Yeah. 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 So and being on my knees all day, that's a great. Yeah. 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 Didn't Kramer do that in Seinfeld once? <laughs> <laughs> so I think he did. All right, number eight. You get less than seven and a half seconds to grab a hiring manager's attention wow. when they read your resume for the first time. Seven and a half seconds. Seconds. That's according to career coaches. And according to Harvard resume experts, there are two words to avoid. Responsible for. Lots of people use this, and then they list the duties they were in charge of at their previous job, but it's a bad idea. The Harvard experts say it's weak and generic, uh, and it doesn't, you know, they use it to describe their duties and accomplishments, but they say you shouldn't do it. Instead, use bolder terms like directed, managed, spearheaded. Ooh, that'll yeah. do it. Spearheaded. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number seven, when you think of the really wealthy retired athletes, the names that probably come to mind are Jordan, Arnold Palmer, David Beckham. But what about Junior Bridgman? Ooh. He's actually from East Chicago, Indiana. He had a nice 12-year yeah. NBA career, mostly for the Bucks. Never made more than 350 grand a year, which is you know, wow. still great, obviously. But his net worth is now 600 million and growing. What? But how did he do it during the NBA off seasons? He worked at Wendy's, getting to know the business model of fast food. When he retired, he was ready to invest. He was good at it and ended up with more than 100 Wendy's and wow. Chili's restaurants. He also became a bottler for Coca-Cola. In 2020, he bought the uh, magazine Ebony, the Ebony Magazine Media Company. He is 68 now, and it's estimated that he brings in about 32 million a year. Wow, oh, that's that awesome. great. What a great story. Yeah. yeah. All right, number six, talk about extreme home makeover. A couple in Davon, England. <laughs> Devon? I don't know. I, but I, you just, know what? I think the Brits call it Davon. Davon. Like you're reading it. You yeah, you're right. You go right ahead. Uh, they bought Not an here. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. And the Brits talk funny anyhow. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, anyhow, they bought an abandoned rat infested church. Who and did? A, uh, a couple. People. Oh, okay. He's, yeah. From Devon, <laughs> uh, and it turned. Uh, they turned it into a home. It was destroyed by fire in 2019, so they bought it for real cheap. They left a lot of the original church aesthetic while adding modern upgrades. There are five bedrooms, a game room, a secret uh, staircase that leads up to the church tower, which has been transformed into a living area with incredible views. The home is now on the market, and they're asking $4.4 million. Our mm. resident Brit says it's Devon. Devon. Yeah, I was close. Yeah. Well, again, this is yeah. America, and we yeah. can say whatever we want. <laughs> Uh, number five, speaking of tennis, uh, did you know that the balls at the U.S. Open are different for men and women? Well, speaking of tennis? Well, we, we did a tennis yeah, story about... Yeah, well, you read the story. Two and a half yeah. minutes ago. Oh, you were going to run the it. one yeah. with Paul. Yeah. Okay, right. sorry. Wilson makes the balls. The men play with a type called Wilson's Extra Duty Tennis Balls. These are made specifically for hard courts. The women play with regular duty balls, which play faster, are less durable, and are actually more suited to softer surfaces like clay or indoor courts. Mm. Ah. The U.S. Open is a hard court tournament, and it's the only grand slam where male and female players use different balls. The women have been pretty vocal about how they hate the softer balls, saying they are way too light after a few games. Mm. Oh, didn't know that. Me neither. All right, number four, humpback whales pass their songs across oceans. Oh, boy. Here we go. Marine scientists did a study. For example, whales in Australia have a certain song they're known for singing. They pass it along to others in Polynesia, who in turn pass it to other whales in Ecuador. It takes a few years for the songs to move from region to region, but it's possible for the songs to travel around the entire southern hemisphere. Wow, isn't that beautiful? The humpback yeah. whales spend their winters in the same breeding grounds. The males sing loud underwater songs that can last half an hour. And all males sing nearly the same identical tune. Yeah. Over the next year, the song evolves into a new melody. Oh, that's well, that could be an example for uh, for mankind, right? Yeah.
We just sang to each other more and passed yeah. those mm -hmm. songs along yeah. from hemisphere to hemisphere. Why are you? I think it's poo -pooing a big pile of BS. Thing? We're projecting. Again. It's science. The yeah. scientists say. I, I think it's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I just find There's it hard someone to in a scuba suit down there with like yeah, one of these, like an ear horn. Going, all right, let's, yeah. swim, let's swim with them to another area and see if they can sing the next song to the next set of women. It's a pile of crap. You're just not a believer in nature. Mm. I appreciate nature. I think nature. we're just projecting our stuff. Tell me any whales that you know that are singing, <laughs> walking around the singing song. Under the sea. You got a point there. Yeah. <laughs> I beg anybody. Yeah, you got a point there. Telling him he's got a point. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. You start thinking about it. Yeah. You name one whale you know that's walking down the street singing a song <sighs> and passing it on to another whale. You're not gonna find it. Yeah. No, you are right. It's all crap. Number three. Here are some more logos that have things in their design that you might not notice without looking closely. Uh, Baskin Robin has uh, 31 flavors, right? Did you ever know oh, that? Oh, look at that! Right 31. in the middle. Oh, in where? pink. Look at Whoa, that! Look at there! You didn't know that? No. no. That, that seems to be pretty Woo. obvious to me. Oh, that's fun. Uh, Goodwill. In right. the upper left, you can see the uh, smiley logo that yeah. Yeah. most people would recognize, <laughs> but a lot of people never noticed that the G in Goodwill oh, yeah. is the same smiley face as the logo. Oh, isn't that adorable? Um, and you know those uh, polar bears that uh, Coke uses in yeah. the winter? Those are some talented bears. You probably never saw this one. You'd have to look closely in some of the advertisement. Uh, the eyes are bottle caps. Really? And the highlight on the nose is, you guessed it, wow. it's a soda bottle. Good <laughs> Lord. Didn't mm. see that. Wow. Well, that was a fun segment. Yeah, it I was. Like I learned a lot. It's kind of like finding stuff on TV. Yeah. You know, yeah. Match this, and that's a fun time. Yeah. Thanks, Pat. Uh, number two, this is how stadium seats are restored. Just like this, watch. Look at that. What? Yeah. Looks like witchcraft or something there, but uh, what's actually happening is they're burning off the oxida oxidation that's on the seats. Essentially, they're burning just a little bit of the top layer of the seat. What do you know? Wow. That's the faded part. It's faded by the sun. What? Look at that. And you kaboom, and uh, you get the fresh color underneath. Wow. Isn't that fun? Is that That'd be incredibly fun to do that satisfying. Job. Right? Satisfying, Wouldn't that be more right? fun than this? I need wow. A <laughs> But you know, much like, like the this, power though. washing, it gets old after the first row of seats. Yeah, maybe. You know, it's like oh, you get cut. Yeah, but you don't like the power washer because it's heavy and you got to right. This, this looks like, like it's just a blue hour. Yeah. And it's fire. And what if you hold it in place too long? You set the whole yeah. seat on fire? That's kind of the fun of it, too. Yeah, you don't know. You light other stuff on fire. That's pretty cool. Huh. A couple satisfying stories. Yeah, that yeah. Was great. Yeah. All right, number one, you can't get a top that, Larry. All right, well, let's see. This one requires a little setup. Adam Howes, Howes has a great Twitter feed about sports and movies, and he explains, during a recent appearance on Jimmy Kimmel Live, John Cusack spoke about the night he was courtside to witness an iconic exchange between Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. So I went ahead and put this edit together. Well, thanks, Adam. Here it is. And Kobe started to drive. Michael stepped in front of, right in front of me, and he took the charge. And he went down, and Kobe was standing above him. And Michael just looked up and he said, well, everybody in the building knew you weren't going to pass. You know, the, you know, the old that got him, and Kobe just started laughing, and they both started laughing. But that's what they said there, and that's why everybody around. That's so a good, that is a great. That's <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, that was your nine at nine.